Okay, so next I want to talk about things you can do with lasers in biomedical applications. And the first one is laser surgery. So there's many types of laser surgery, but one of the most common and successful ones is LASIK, which is an acronym for Laser in Situ Keratomonilosis. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer, right? Um, which means to shape the cornea within using a laser. So how does it work? Well, this is not for the squeamish because here's your eyeball. Then they put this little plate over here that keeps a razor blade from taking off your whole eyeball and just cutting back a thin flap here. So they bring in the laser blade, cut the flap. You don't feel a thing because you don't have any nerve endings there, but still. Anyway, here's the flap. It's sitting over here. Then they bring in a eczema laser, which is a UV laser, and they, deter they remove a predetermined amount of tissue to shape reshape this. Then they put the flap back on there, and the body, it'll heal itself. So... Um, it'll bond without the need for any stitches or anything like that over time. And so the cornea is made flatter to treat nearsightedness, steeper to treat farsightedness, and, you know, if you can't see near, you need more curvature, which makes sense, right? And in more spherical to correct astigmatism. So that's, those should all kind of make sense if you think of lenses. Okay, so what else can you do with lasers? Well, they use lasers for skin resurfacing, so they'll use a CO2 laser, 10.6 microns, which will penetrate about 30 microns deep, or they'll use a green, or not a green laser, a YAG erbium laser, 2.4 microns for 3 micron depth. And the reason why it goes less deep is you have 10 times difference in absorption coefficient. So see slide 5 where we're looking at the absorption profile of human tissue, and you can see, you know, why this would go less deep for the, uh, for the absorption. Okay? So, when you're doing these type of things, you also want to be careful not to burn the skin too much underneath. So this is thermal depth, meaning how far does the temperature rise to a dangerous level of, I think in this case it's 65 degrees C, versus pulse duration. So if you go to short pulses, like a really short pulses, then you can hit a short pulse, blow away some skin essentially, and then let the skin cool back down before you hit the second pulse. Or you could just have really long pulses, but during those long pulses, the depth of the heat is much higher. So typically you use pulse lasers for doing this. You could use it for hair removal. You pick the right wavelengths that have a strong absorption in, in uh, hair melanin, not skin, because you don't want to burn the skin. And you can even use it for tattoo removal. So, for example, for tattoos, they use a 532 nanometer laser, kind of like a green laser pointer. And the reason why they use this, tattoos are just pigments that are put in the skin that are too big for the body to remove. So their particles are so big that your body can't remove them. The laser just breaks them into smaller particles and your body is able to basically make them disappear afterwards slowly. So it takes a little while. And you really, what they use this green is they carefully match it to laser wavelengths so that the laser is absorbed by the pigments of the, in the tattoo only and not the skin so you're not blasting the skin. You can also use laser for surgery for tissue bonding. There's three types. One, collagen itself will uncoil and bond if you heat it up. So you could bring two tissues together and hit a laser on it and, and bring it together. The other one's kind of interesting is the protein is salt, salt, uh, solder. Just add some albumin and heat it up. So just like a frying an egg, you basically put this where you want to put some tissue together and you hit a laser on it and fry it up and the albumin will bond and stick to tissue and hold it together. And if you want to be really selective, you can use some dye-enhanced albumin that basically the dye absorb, you put a dye that's strongly absorbing of the laser wavelength, so when the laser hit, it doesn't hit the tissue that you want to solder, just the, just the solder itself, essentially, and it localizes the heating better. So at that point, take a break and do this review question, and again, we're almost there. We're working on it.